for a moment using the slides and uh, as promising the slides and uh, as promised yesterday I'll try to give a, a kind of a general introduction try to give a, a kind of a general introduction to the combinatorics of the three uh, three to the combinatorics of the three uh, three different large end limits that uh, that I started discussing yesterday, it's that, uh, that I started discussing yesterday. Uh, so in a nutshell, uh, they're distinguished. Uh, so in a nutshell, uh, they're distinguished by uh, the comparison between snail diagrams and melon diagrams. Distinguished by uh, the comparison between snail diagrams and melon diagrams. Okay. So this one, often it's called tadpole, but often it's called tadpole, but another name is snail. Right, you see the snail, it basically looks like. And this one is, uh, is often called the sunset diagram, but uh, the modern terminology is melons. Uh, another name is snail. Right, you see the snail, it basically looks like. And this one is, uh, is often called the sunset diagram, though I'll talk a bit more with my slides about why it's called melon. Uh, but uh, essentially, the, we will see that um, diagram, but uh, the modern terminology is melons. Uh, and though I'll talk a bit more with my slides about why it's called melon. If you start with a vector large end limit, which is the simplest one, then it's completely dominated by snail diagrams and, uh, and the melon. Uh, but uh, essentially, the, we will see that um, if you start with a vector large end limit, which is the simplest one, then it's completely dominated by snail diagrams and, uh, and the melons are subdominant. Then when they move on to the matrix, then they are subdominant. Then when they move on to the matrix, then both snails and melons contribute equally. And then finally, there is a spin. Both snails and melons contribute equally. And then finally, there is a special tensor limit, which uh, is completely dominated by special tensor limit, which uh, is completely dominated by, by melons. OK, so, so let's look at first the vector by melons. Okay, so, so let's look at first the vector, vector large n limit, vector large n limit, uh, limit, uh, limit, and, uh, and here we will uh, take, take and, uh, and here we will uh, take take a vector with one index phi i, right? And i runs from one. Take a vector with one index phi i, right? And i runs from one to n, right? And we impose one to n, right? And we impose uh, impose uh, O n symmetry. Uh, impose uh, O-N symmetry. 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 Uh, so an example of this is this uh, Wilson-Fisher 5-4 theory. Uh, uh, so an example of this is this uh, Wilson-Fisher 5-4 theory. Uh, but uh, I will largely work in a dimension independent, but uh, I will largely work in a dimension independent way and uh, even do some stuff in d equals zero just without any spatial dimension way and uh, even do some stuff in d equals zero just without any spatial dimension. So, so I take, for example, the intention. So, so I take, for example, the interaction potential V of phi i to be of the form uh, G interaction potential V of phi i to be of the form uh, G G over four factorial G, G over four factorial times 
phi i phi i squared, right? Which, which can also be written as, uh, uh, you can write it, for example, as uh, g over 24 times phi i phi i squared, right? Which, which can also be written as uh, times uh, phi i phi j phi k phi l times delta, uh, uh, you can write it, for example, as uh, g over 24 times uh, phi i phi j phi k phi l times delta i j times delta k l. I j times delta k l. Right. So, so now in terms of the index flows, uh, right. So, so now in terms of the index flows, uh, we can represent this diagram uh, in the. We can represent this diagram uh, in the following way. If you look at the four-point vertex. Uh, so, the, so the following way, uh, if you look at the four-point vertex, uh, so, the, so I will distinguish between the index-independent notation where the four-point distinguish between the index-independent notation where the four-point vertex will will just look like this, and then you can basically also vertex will will just look like this. And then you can basically also study what happens with the index flows. So if you study what happens with the index flows, so if you write this as, uh, you see that pairs of indices are contracted. So if you write this as, uh, you see that pairs of indices are contracted. So if I have I here, it flows into I. So if I have I here, it flows into I and j flows into j. So that's a way to distribute the index and j flows into j. So that's a way to distribute the index contraction here. And then we will see that every contraction here. And then we will see that every index loop, since it contributes a factor of n, we, um, every index loop, since it contributes a factor of n, we, um, we can uh, count the factors of n pretty easily. We can uh, count the factors of n pretty easily. Right, so now let's see what the snail diagram looks like, right? Right, so now let's see what the snail diagram looks like, right? So the snail diagram, uh, so the snail, so the snail diagram, uh, so the snail in this notation, which ke keeps track of the indices, just looks like this. In this notation, which ke keeps track of the indices, just looks like this, right? Uh, uh, and then there is, of course, uh, this vertex has a factor of minus g, right? So, uh, this vertex has a factor of minus g, right? So, so when you uh, look at so, so when you uh, look at this, this has a factor of g from uh, from just the interaction vertex. This this has a factor of g from uh, from just the interaction vertex times n, right? Uh, times n, right? Uh, on the other hand, the melon. The melon has two powers of the vertex, and one way to draw it will be like this, right? So that the, uh, on the other hand, the melon, the melon has two powers of the vertex, and one way to so each of the vertex has this type of structure that that I drew here. So the melon therefore contributes. Uh, uh, draw it will be like this, right? So that the 
So each of the vertex has this type of structure that, that I g squared times n. There is still only one extra index loop, right? And these can be interpreted as propagator correction drew here. So the melon, therefore, contributes uh, uh, g squared times n. There is still only one extra index loop. Right? And these can be interpreted as propagator corrections. Right? So, uh, so if I just right? so, uh, so if I just take the bare propagator, uh, bare propagator, take the bare propagator, uh, bare propagator. That's just a line, and, uh, and we can just say that phi i. That's just a line, and, uh, and we can just say that phi i, phi j is uh, delta i j. Phi j is uh, delta i j. It's index structure, right? So now you basically see how to take the its index structure, right? So now you basically see how to take the large n limit, right? Uh, you don't want the large n limit, large n limit, right? Uh, you don't want the large n limit to dominate the, the leading correction to dominate over to dominate the the leading correction to dominate over uh, dominate over the tree level result. So the large n uh, dominate over the tree level result. So the large n limit has to keep g n fixed, right? So, so we define the limit has to keep g n fixed, right? So, so we define the uh, in the large n limit you define lambda is equal to uh, in the large n limit you define lambda is equal to g n is uh, kept fixed fixed as uh, n goes to infinity. Okay, so the coupling does have to weaken the way you define the coupling here. Gn is uh, kept fixed, fixed as uh, n goes to infinity. Uh, and then you see that melon is negligible. That's going to go as lambda squared divided by n. Right, so melon is negligible here. Okay, so the coupling does have to weaken the way you define the coupling here. Uh, and then you see that melon is negligible. That's <coughs> this is a rather well-known thing. So, uh, and then the higher order correction is going to go as lambda squared divided by n. Right, so melon is negligible here. This is a rather well-known thing. So, uh, and then the higher order corrections will be just, you can start resumming further snails. Just, you can start resumming further snails. So, uh, so there will be further contributions where you also, uh, so there will be further contributions where you also at higher loop orders, you can, for example, have these. So at higher loop orders, you can, for example, have these uh, at order g squared, and this contributes, right? So this, this will be uh, at order g squared, and this contributes, right? So this, this will be of order g squared times n squared, which is of order lambda order g squared times n squared, which is of order lambda squared. So it's certainly a good limit, but it's rather simple because everything is squared. So it's certainly a good limit, but it's rather simple because everything is dominated by these chains of bubbles. It's dominated by these chains of bubbles. Okay, so now let's, uh, uh, so, so you can just view this. Okay, so now let's, uh, uh, so, so you can just view this, this theory as a, um, particular multi this theory as a 
particular multi-component 5-4 theory. We just take uh, n squared different 5 component 5-4 theory. We just take uh, n squared different 5 fields and couple them together in a certain invariant way. Fields and couple them together in a certain invariant way. Right, so now let's proceed in a similar way to a matrix model. Right, so now let's proceed in a similar way to a matrix model. Okay, there are many different versions of the matrix model, but okay, there are many different versions of the matrix model, but we can just take uh, matrix, uh, and we can take, for example, phi AC uh, is a, a real n by n matrix. But we can just take uh, matrix, uh, and we can take, for example, phi real n by n uh, matrix, right? Where both A and C run from 1 to n. Uh, is a, a real n by n matrix. Real n by n. And I want to write down the interaction. We want to impose, for example, uh, for reasons that, uh, right, where both A and C run from 1 to n. <clears throat> and I want to write down the interaction. We want to impose, for example, uh, for reasons that uh, this is not what's maybe typically done, but I want to impose what's maybe typically done, but I want to impose O n cross O n symmetry. And symmetry. Uh, yes. Yes. Yeah, we want uh, it's. Yeah, we want uh, it's part of the art of defining a good large n limit where <coughs> subsequent orders and permitting a good large n limit where <coughs> subsequent orders and perturbation theory don't overwhelm your leading order, right? Yeah. Overwhelm your leading order, right? Yeah. You want the limit to be smooth, so you don't. So you want uh, basically smooth. So you don't. So you want uh, basically that things sum up nicely to something of order one, and sum up nicely to something of order one in the large n limit. For example, the if you sum up the propagator corrections, you don't want them to double the. If you sum up the propagator corrections, you don't want them to diverge uncontrollably as higher and higher powers of n, right? As higher and higher powers of n, right? That's why you. You basically, you say that G, so you start with this theory, but you have a multi-component field, and then you basically send G to zero to, to have the smooth large n limit. You basically, you say that G, so you start with this theory, but you have a multi-component field, and so you basically define G is equal to lambda over n, where lambda is now some measure of the coupling, and you have to put the sign of zero to, to have the smooth large n limit. So you basically define G is equal to lambda over n. I mentioned something like this already for the Hoft limit, right? And Hoft limit, uh, you have to send G young mills to zero as one over n, where lambda is now some measure of the coupling, and you have to put the sign of the I mentioned something like this already for the Hoft limit, right? And Hoft limit, uh, you have to send G young mills to zero as one over square root of n. Otherwise, again, things will not be controllable. Square root of n. Otherwise, again, things will not be controllable. You'll get like higher and higher powers of n, and uh, it doesn't make controllable. You'll get like higher and higher powers of n, and uh, it doesn't make sense. So.
yeah, you first make these estimates of what you need to do, and then you make these estimates of what you need to do, and then you can prove that, uh, that you get some non-trivial functions of this lambda appearing everywhere, uh, that you get some non-trivial functions of this lambda appearing everywhere, plus one over n corrections. If you keep g one over n corrections, if you keep g fixed, uh, the theory will not make sense in the large n limit, right? And you immediately, the theory will not make sense in the large n limit, right? And you immediately see it from just the large number of fields propagating in the loops, the large number of fields propagating in the loops. It's always like this, basically, because there is a large number of fields like this, basically, because there is a large number of fields propagating in loops, you cannot keep the coupling G fixed. You cannot keep the coupling G fixed. You have to send the coupling between these fields as one over some power of n. Send the coupling between these fields as one over some power of n. Okay, so so maybe I okay, so so maybe I what I discussed yesterday was a Hermitian matrix case, but then there are different versions of of these. What I discussed yesterday was a Hermitian matrix case, but then there are different versions of of these uh, of these theories. And let me just uh, of these theories, and let me just talk uh, about real general real matrix. I don't impose symmetry. So a talk uh, about real general real matrix. I don't impose symmetry. So A and C indices are really on a different footing. Uh, a and C indices are really on a different footing. Uh, and, uh, and now you, you want to denote all the index loops of A by, for example, the, the green color and uh, the index loops of, uh, of and, uh, and now you, you want to denote all the index loops of A by, for example, the, the green of C by the, by the orange color, right? So in particular, the propagator, if I want to look at the propagator color and uh, the index loops of, uh, of, of C by the, by the orange color. There of the matrix, phi, uh, this is just thinking about it as, as some phi, one of the phi fields, but then, right, so in particular, the propagator, if I want to look at the propagator of the matrix, phi, uh, this is just thinking about it as, as some phi, one of the phi fields, but then there is a so-called stranded notation there is a so-called stranded notation. We can call it stranded or uh, stranded. We can call it stranded or uh, stranded. Uh, and then it can be drawn like this. Uh, and then it can be drawn like this. Uh, sorry, oops, what am I doing? Uh, sorry, oops, what am I doing? So there will be one, one green line and one, so there will be one, one green line and one orange line. They look sufficient orange line. They look sufficiently different. Maybe I'll use red. Simply different. Maybe I'll use red. The one, yeah, these look pretty distinguishable, right? One, yeah, these look pretty distinguishable, right? Okay, so this will be, uh, so if I write, okay, so this will be, uh, so if I 
write down in the index notation, for example, the two-point function. This will, will, is just the vectorial notation for phi uh, AC with phi A prime C prime being given by down in the index notation, for example, the two-point function. This will, will, is just the vectorial notation for phi uh, delta A A prime delta C C prime. Right, basically a green index connects with a green index and the uh, A C with phi A prime C prime being given by delta A A prime delta C red one connects with the red one. Okay, so now which uh, now we have to write down the O N invariant vertex C C prime. Right, basically a green index connects with a green index and the red one connects with the red one. Okay, so now which uh, now we have to write down the O N invariant vertex uh, and the stranded notation for the vertex. First let's just write uh, and the stranded notation for the vertex, first let's just write down what it should be. So the, so we take the potential V, write down what it should be. So the, so we take the potential V to be of the form G over four factorial, to be of the form G over four factorial times phi a1 c1 phi times phi a1 c1 phi uh, a1 c2 phi uh, a1 c2 phi a2 e1 phi a2 a2 e1 phi a2 c2 Okay, and uh, C2. Okay, and uh, and it, it's um, and if I, uh, and it, it's um, and if phi transforms under these two O N symmetries in the obvious way, phi transforms under these two O N symmetries in the obvious way, right? Uh, like. Uh, you can just write, uh, like uh, you can just say that phi, so under the, say that phi, so under these on cross n, you see that because these indices are contracted pairwise, there are no free indices cross n, you see that because these indices are contracted pairwise, there are no free indices uh, the following two symmetries will will be uh, uh, the following two symmetries will will be obeyed. So phi a prime c prime we can write as obeyed. So phi a prime c prime we can write as some orthogonal matrix R. Some orthogonal matrix R. Uh, R one. A prime A, R2, C prime C times phi AC. Okay, so there are two ON symmetries. One acts on the first index, the other one acts on the second. R1, A prime A, R2, C prime C times phi AC. Second index, and you can check that, uh, that because uh, R1, R1 transpose is equal to, okay, so there are two ON symmetries. One acts on the first index, the other one acts on the second index, and you can check that, uh, that R2, R2 transpose is equal to one. This is an ON cross ON invariant expression, right? This uh, R1, R1 transpose is equal to R2, R2 transpose is equal to one. This is an O N cross N invariant expression, right? Okay. So now let's draw this uh, this interaction. Okay. So now let's draw this uh, this interaction in a pictorial way. 
we can just draw it in, uh, in an epictorial way. We can just draw it in, uh, like this. We can uh, like this. We can uh, we can draw this interaction. We can draw this interaction as as Okay, so for example, okay, so for example, this is a one. Uh, well, this is a one. Uh, so this is the index, say a one. Here, this is so this is the index, say a one. Here, this is the index, say two. And this is the index, uh, the index A2, and this is the index uh, uh, C2, and this is index C1. One. So if you see how things are contracted, this, uh, this one, uh, C2, and this is index C1. One. is phi A1 C1, this is phi A1 C2, this is phi A2 C2, and this is phi uh, A2 C1. So if you see how things are contracted, this, uh, this one is phi A1 C1, this is phi A1, so it's a, it's a pictorial way to exhibit this contraction. Okay, so now let's look, let's see what the, uh, C2, this is phi A2 C2, and this is phi uh, A2 C1. So it's a, it's a pictorial way to exhibit this contraction. Okay, so now let's look, let's see what the snail and the melon will look with this type of vertex contraction. Snail and the melon will look with this type of vertex contraction. Right, uh, so the snail Let's, let's try to draw this, right? Uh, so the snail, let's, let's try to draw the snail. Uh, snail, uh, it's going to be, going to be, so this will be, This will be the red one. Be the red one. Yeah, if you open up this. Yeah, if you open up this, this vertex, it looks exactly like this thing, okay? You see that it's exactly like this thing, okay? You see that, so, so you see that here, there will be a loop of, so, so you see that here, there will be a loop of uh, just, just a single loop here, right? A single index loop, just a single loop here, right? A single index loop. Uh, and it corrects, it's one of the possible corrections. Then you can also, uh, and it corrects, it's one of the possible corrections. Then you can also insert a similar thing on, on the other line. But then you basically, on, on the other line. But then you basically notice that this is, uh, 
because there is a single index loop counted as n, this again has g times n. Right, so, so it suggests that g, g times n again in this. I notice that this is, uh, because there is a single index loop counted as n, this again has g times n. Right, held fixed and the large n limit. Okay, so, so that's the snail. So, so it suggests that g, to, g times n again in this notation has to be held fixed and the large n limit. Okay, so, and now the melon will look uh, in a, let's try to draw the melon. All right, there will be, so that's the snail. And now the melon will look In a, let's try to draw the melon. All right, there will be and then here I will have this thing. And here I will have this thing. And here I will have this. Here I will have this. Right, so if you right, so if you if you look at this vertex, it looks basically identical to this vertex. And then I, if you look at this vertex, it looks basically identical to this vertex, and then I glue using the propagators to another such vertex. Okay? And gators to another such vertex. Okay, and now you see that there are now two index loops, right? The green and the, now you see that there are now two index loops, right? The green and the, uh, the pink loop, right? So, so this is the mel the pink loop, right? So, so this is the melon in this trended notation and this one in this trended notation and this looks like g squared times n squared. Squared times n squared. Okay, so, so here you see that uh, both of them contribute basically equally in the large n limit where you again keep, so you define the large n limit, so you again keep. Okay, so, so here you see that uh, both of them contribute basically equally in the large n limit where you again keep is equal to gn fixed as n goes to infinity. So you define the large n limit, so you again keep this lambda is equal to gn fixed. And then uh, both so both melon, both snail and melon survive. Survive in this limit. As n goes to infinity. Uh, and then uh, both, so both melon, and this is not too surprising, right? Because both of them are planar diagrams. What I told you yesterday is that, is that uh, planar diagrams, all snail and melon survive survive in this limit. And this is not too surprising, right, because both of them are planar diagrams. What I told you yesterday is that, is that uh, planar diagrams all contribute equally, and both of them you can draw on a plane. There are no, like, and both of them you can draw on a plane. There are no, like, uh, indices crossing under each other or anything uh, of the indices crossing under each other or anything uh, of that sort. Right? You may be a bit confused why this is not, you may be a bit confused why this is not going as one over square root of n, right? Like, uh, it's one over square root of n, right? Like, uh, this, you, you should think of this g as, as a quartic gluon coupling. Think of this g as, as a quartic gluon coupling. Remember, like when, 
when I talked about that Hoft story, read when when I talked about that Hoft story, read Hoft taught us that G. Young Mills uh, goes like us that G. Young Mills uh, goes like uh, uh, square root of lambda. Uh, uh, square root of lambda over square root of n. Square root of n. Right, but this was a three gluon coupling. Right, three. Right, but this was a three gluon coupling. Right, three, three gluon coupling. But there is also the four gluon coupling. Coupling, but there is also the four gluon coupling. Right, which goes like G young mills squared, and this goes like lambda over n. Right, so what I'm denoting by G is uh, G young mills squared, right, the coefficient. So my G, is, right, which goes like G young mills squared, and this goes like lambda over n. Right, so what I'm denoting by G young mills squared is if I'm retaining some corded coupling. Okay, so, so all of this is uh, G young mills squared, right, the coefficient. So my G is in spirit like G young mills squared, as if I'm retaining some clearly there. And now let me make the big leap to the relatively new stuff, which is this tensor. Yes? Yeah, plane. Okay, so, so all of this is probably quite familiar. And now let me make the big leap. Right, right. The relatively new stuff, which is this tensor. Yes. That's actually a very yeah. That's actually a very very good question. Uh, there there is only another one other way, which uh, there there is only another one other way, which is the double trace interaction, uh, which is the double trace interaction. Uh, it's actually it. Uh, it's good in the way you asked because I was going to bring this up. It's good in the way you asked because I was going to bring this up. So I'm choosing a particular, so this is what people call the single trace. So I'm choosing a particular, so this is what people call the single trace uh, choice of interaction. So we can call this ST choice of interaction. So we can call this ST and ST stands for single trace. T and ST stands for single trace, single trace, uh, but it's not unique, single trace, uh, but it's not unique. There is only one other choice, which is there is also only one other choice, which is there is also a double trace. Uh, so where should I write this? A double trace. Uh, so where should I write this? Yeah, I think I can just, uh, yeah, I think I can just uh, call. So in matrix models can, matrix models can add a double trace. So in matrix models can, matrix models. So we can add V prime, which will be some G prime times and add a double trace. 
So we can add phi AC, phi AC, all squared. Okay, and that will actually uh, look at the prime, which will be some G prime times uh, phi AC, phi AC, all squared. Uh, yeah, this, this will be, uh, yeah, I will not draw this, but uh, you have, okay, and that will actually, uh, look, it will look different. Uh, yeah, this, this will be, uh, yeah, I will not draw this, but uh, you have a rather different structure of, uh, uh, structure of, uh, uh, of the correction, because the vertex will look disconnected. It will not look like disconnected of the correction, because the vertex will look disconnected. It will not look like disconnected thing, right? It will, if I, if I try to draw it, it will, if I, if I try to draw it, it may look sort of like this. It may look sort of like this. So that will be the because the two of the matrices are just contract will be the because the two of the matrices are just contracted here and the other two are contracted here, and then you you get different com here and the other two are contracted here, and then you you get different com you get different powers of n with this vertex. So for example, if you start doing the snail, uh, the snail will. Um, of n with this vertex. So, for example, if you start doing the snail, uh, the snail will, uh, will now start looking sort of like this. And then there will be uh, the snail will now start looking sort of like this. Right, you just take two of these and, and close, and then there will be. Um, and this, of course, brings now two powers of n, not one power of n. So it very sensitively depends on what kind of interaction vertex. Right, you just take two of these and, and close them up. And this, of course, brings now two powers of n, not one power of n. So it very sensitively depends on what kind of interaction vertex, uh, vertex I want to have. So this is, of course, uh, vertex I want to have. So this is, of course, multiplied by g prime times n squared. g prime times n squared. So then it, the, uh, the upshot of the story is that you can, so then, it, the, uh, the upshot of the story is that you can add this interaction, but you have to scale this this g prime differently from you have to scale this this g prime differently from that g there, right? So so you can add v prime so there, right? So so you can add v prime. So you have to keep this uh, uh, this is equal to lambda. Uh, uh, this is equal to lambda prime fixed. So you have to scale g prime to z prime fixed. So you have to scale g prime to zeros and to the minus two times lambda prime. And then this combined minus two times lambda prime. And then this combined theory of the, both of these interactions actually is okay and makes sense. Theory of the, both of these interactions actually is okay and makes sense. 
Uh, and actually, so people who study these uh, matrix and actually, so people who study these uh, matrix models for 2D quantum gravity actually did start adding this quantum gravity, actually did start adding this, this type of interaction. And you can see that this affects even the leading planar diagrams. And uh, I actually wrote many papers on these double trace things. There is a simple way to solve it by this type of interaction. And you can see that this affects even the leading planar diagrams. And uh, I actually wrote many papers on these double trace, Hubbard Stratonovich field. You can uh, basically unmix the double trace by writing something like phi, these things. There is a simple way to solve it by, again, adding this Hub Hubbard Stratonovich field. You can uh, basically phi AC times some uh, uh, sigma field, right? And then just add sigma, basically unmix the double trace by writing something like phi AC phi AC times some uh, a sigma squared over g prime, something like this. So, so it's like you're adding this type of field, right? And then just add sigma squared a sigma squared over g prime, something like this. So, so it's like you're adding this type of interaction and then you're integrating over sigma and then you're integrating over sigma. Yeah, yeah, it becomes a lot like the vector model. So just pure this interaction becomes a lot like the vector model. So just pure this interaction is rather trivial, right? If you just take this interaction, you just iterate the trivial, right? If you just take this interaction, you just iterate the bubbles, and it by itself becomes like vector model. So the non-trivial itself becomes like vector model. So the non-trivial new part about the matrix is the existence of this single trace. And about the matrix is the existence of this single trace interaction, which looks qualitatively different, and it starts filling out interaction, which looks qualitatively different, and it starts filling out the, the whole planar surface. Otherwise, you get this planar surface. Otherwise, you get these polymeric type graphs, right? With, okay, great. So, polymeric type graphs, right? With, okay, great. So, so now let me. Uh, this stuff is literally what. Uh, uh, this stuff is literally what uh, uh, people worked on 27 years ago. <laughs> uh, people worked on 27 years ago, <laughs> 25 years ago. There were many Trieste schools where people talked extensively. There were many Trieste schools where people talked extensively about these models, including double trace. Uh, I think the, there was the first uh, mention of double trace in these uh, one matrix models was by Das, Dars, and Gupta, and Wadia live about these models, including double trace. Uh, I think the, there was the first uh, mention of double trace in these, uh, and then I followed up to some extent on that. But. Okay, so now let's move on to tensor models, which is something more complicated. Uh, one matrix models was by Das, Dars, and Gupta, and Wadia. It was a very nice paper, and then I followed up to some extent on that. But. Okay, so tensor models. So I must say that the work on tensor models also started right. Okay, so now let's move on to tensor models, which is something more complicated. Okay, so tensor models. Years ago, or 27 years ago, and uh, and the first attempts were by experts on matrix models. They were just, so I must say that the work on tensor models also started right around 26 years ago or 27 years ago. And, uh, and the first attempts were by experts on matrix models. They were just trying to add an extra index, like people uh, understood that um, index, like people 
uh, understood that, um, that you get planar diagrams from these matrices, that you get planar diagrams from these matrices, and if you add an extra index, the idea was that you now, instead of add an extra index, the idea was that you now, instead of uh, surfaces, you get like three volumes, fluctuating three geometries. Uh, surfaces, you get like three volumes, fluctuating three geometries, for example, with three index. And uh, it's a bit hard to draw all these tetrahedra. And uh, it's a bit hard to draw all these tetrahedra, but I'll show the slides uh, uh, tomorrow. Uh, but I'll show the slides uh, uh, tomorrow where I have various pictures of this. But so now finally this pictures of this. But so now finally this uh, tensor, uh, and just for simplicity, uh, tensor, uh, and just for simplicity, I take rank three, uh, rank three, but, uh, rank three, but uh, high ranks don't dramatically change the new situation that arises for tensors. So let me take this phi ABC uh, tensor where, so this now has uh, ranks don't dramatically change the new situation that arises for tensors. So let me take this phi ABC and cube degrees of freedom and uh, each index so A, B, and C runs from one to, to a tensor where, so this now has uh, n cubed degrees of freedom. And uh, each index, so you have, you can think of uh, just n cubed different scalar fields coupled together in some ways. And let me impose B and C runs from one to, to n. So you have, you can think of uh, just n cubed uh, by analogy with what they did there. I want to impose the impose O n O n cube symmetry coupled together in some ways, and let me impose uh, by analogy with what they did there. I want to impose the uh, just completely analogous to that. So now there will be three matrices like uh, this ON, ON cube symmetry. Uh, just completely analogous to that. So now there will be three matrices like uh, phi A prime, B prime, C prime. That's A prime, B prime, C prime. That's equal to R1 A prime A, R2 R1 A prime A, R2 B prime B, and R3 C prime C, B prime B, and R3 C prime C times phi A B C. And these are totally in the phi A B C. And these are totally independent. So each Ri, Ri transpose is equal to one. So each Ri, Ri transpose is equal to one. And then what sort of interactions can I write down? And then what sort of interactions can I write down? In fact, in this case, there are three th different types of interactions one can write. In fact, in this case, there are three th different types of interactions one can write down. Uh, one is the truly tensorial one. Uh, one is the truly tensorial one, and two others are a bit similar to matrix models and vector models. So others are a bit similar to matrix models and vector models. So, so, <coughs> okay, so, <coughs> okay, so, so the truly tensorial story uh, is the following. So, Truly tensorial story uh, is the following. So we can take V to be G divided by V to be G divided by 24. Again, phi A1, B1, C1, 4. Again, phi A1, B1, C1, phi 
A1, B2, C2, phi A2, B1, C2, phi A2, B2, C1. A1, B2, C2, phi A2, B1, C2. Okay, uh, the special thing, so this is what we called tetrahedral. Often A2, B2, C1. Okay, uh, the special thing, so often people call this tetrahedral interaction, uh, and uh, it will become clear in a second why that is. Tetrahedral, often, uh, often people call this tetrahedral interaction. The uh, thing is that you'll notice with this choice of interaction, first of all, since pairs of indices are contracted, uh, you, have, you have this, it will become clear in a second why that is. So one, one thing is that you'll notice with this choice of interaction, first of all, since pairs of indices, every pair of fields has only one index contraction, not two, not zero, but one, right? This and this have a one in common. Uh, you have, you have the symmetry, but every pair of fields has only one index contraction. Not two, not zero, but one, right? This and this have A1 in common, this and this have B1 in common, and so on. Okay, and, uh, and if B1 in common, and so on. Okay, and, uh, and if I want to draw it in terms of, uh, so now in terms of, uh, so now, for example, the propagator for this phi ABC field, we can draw it, propagator for this phi ABC field, we can draw it with three colors. There is a natural three color notation because there is a natural three color notation because these indices are distinguishable, right? So for indices are distinguishable, right? So, for example, uh, we can, uh, if I, we can, uh, if I forget about the matrix for a second, and just draw the stranded matrix for a second, and just draw the stranded notation for the propagator, propagator. Then I have to add an additional blue middle. Then I have to add an additional blue middle line, right? And then this will be, right? And then this will be, the corresponding thing will be phi A, B, C. Phi A, the corresponding thing will be phi A, B, C. Phi A prime, B prime, C prime. And here we will have just the product of, of delta functions, right? B prime, and here we will have just the product of, of delta functions, right? But now let's see how we draw, draw these diagrams, uh, this vertex. Now let's see this diagram. It turns out that it cannot be drawn in a completely planar way. There has to be these middle lines have to cross. How we draw, draw these diagrams, uh, this vertex diagram. It turns out that it cannot be drawn in a completely planar way. Another, okay, and uh, so we have to draw blue, the middle line, and this line, there has to be, these middle lines have to cross underneath each other, okay? And uh, so the line will have to cross underneath, under it, okay? So it's a non-planar looking vertex. And this one, uh, the middle line, and this line will have to cross underneath, under it, okay? So it's a non-planar looking vertex. And this one, 
So this will be the B1 index, and this will be the B2 index. So this will be the B1 index, and this will be the B2 index. And then when you actually see how the fields are multiplied, it and then when you actually see how the fields are multiplied, it will exactly give you the, uh, what I wrote down, the formula I wrote down before, it will exactly give you the, uh, what I wrote down, the formula I wrote down before. Right, and then if you actually, right, and then if you actually, topologically, if you think of each of these as a, as a vertex of a tetrahedron, Topologically, if you think of each of these as a, as a vertex of a tetrahedron, this truly looks like a tetrahedron picture. And this truly looks like a tetrahedron picture. Because every, every vertex is contracted by, a pair of vertices is contracted. Because every, every vertex is contracted by, a pair of vertices is contracted by one of these edges. So. This, this is by one of these edges, so this, this you can recognize as a tetrahedron. And now, so this is a rather you can recognize as a tetrahedron. And now, so this is a rather special selection of an interaction. Uh, there are special selection of an interaction. Uh, there are two more, which I'll write down in a second, which have a different structure, but let's just see, suppose, there are two more, which I'll write down in a second, which have a different structure, but let's just see, suppose, we just retain this interaction and just see what combinatorics we get. Okay, so for snail, uh, you get the following index counting. So for snail, you, we just retain this interaction and just see what combinatorics we get. Okay, so for snail, uh, you get the following. When you draw this, this index goes in like this, just crosses under here and comes out. So the blue line does not mean index counting. So for snail, you, when you draw this, this index goes in like this, just crosses. The middle index does not contribute any more index loops. It's just there is still only GN, right? On the other hand, for the melon, under here and comes out. So the blue line does not, the middle index does not contribute any more index loops. It's just, there is still only GN. Uh, you get this. You get this line coming through here, coming through straight, and, right? On the other hand, for the melon, uh, you get this. You get this line coming through, and then there is a circular one. Okay, so here, coming through straight, and then there is a circular one. So here you get, uh, you get actually, uh, here you get, uh, you get actually, uh, yeah, you get two more loops, right? Yeah, you get two more loops, right? Sorry, yeah, here, sorry, yeah, here, th there is these two original loops. This does not give you a loop. This line goes straight through. But th there is these two original loops. This does not give you a loop. This line goes straight through. But there is a, an extra blue loop, right? So instead of G squared, there is a, an extra blue loop, right? So instead of G squared N squared, you get G squared N cubed. N squared, you get G squared N cube. Okay, so now this gives you an idea that you have to keep, uh, 
uh, lambda, which is g n to the three halves fixed, right? Because otherwise, if you keep just g n fixed, then this is going to block. Okay, so now this gives you an idea that you have to keep uh, uh, lambda, which is g n to the three halves fixed, right? Up on you, right? So if you keep g n to the three halves fixed, uh, as n goes to infinity, then at least this w this one. Because otherwise, if you keep just g n fixed, then this is going to blow up on you, right? So if you keep g n to the three halves fixed, it's happy, okay? And now finally, melons are winning this war. So so melons. Uh, uh, as n goes to infinity, then at least this, w this one is happy, okay? And now, finally, melons are winning this war. Melon dominates. So it's very simple. So, so melons, uh, melon dominates. Counting, right, and uh, and it uh, clearly gives you an idea of something totally different is happening for this theory. So it's very simple counting, right, and uh, and it uh, clearly gives you an idea of something totally different is happening for this theory. And then you can essentially uh, uh, you can start looking at how. And then you can essentially, uh, uh, you can start looking at higher orders and uh, I will not do it today because, uh, and uh, I will not do it today because, uh, uh, because it will, will take a while, but, but the, uh, because it will, will take a while, but, but the, the full set of diagrams that, that you pick up in this limit, a full set of diagrams that, that you pick up in this limit with just this interaction are so-called melonic diagrams. With just this interaction are so-called melonic diagrams where you iterate, so you have to iterate uh, the insertion rate, so you have to iterate uh, the insertions of melons. Iterate just each line of melons. Iterate just each line gets replaced by by this, right? Replaced by by this, right? So in particular, you can start inserting melons inside melons, and so in particular, you can start inserting melons inside melons and melons inside melons. So so you get like these sort of melons inside melons. So so you get like these sort of things, uh, like this inside here, and this, like this inside here, and this inside here. So, so this is some class of diagrams inside here. So, so this is some class of diagrams that you pick up that one can prove are dominant. And it's a much, much smaller that one can prove are dominant. And it's a much, much smaller class than planar diagrams. So these will be the melonic, uh, melonic class, which is much, much smaller than all planar graphs. So in fact, smaller class than planar diagrams. So these will be the melonic, uh, melonic class, which is much more so like. Uh, it's really much simpler than a planar theory, which is a big surprise. Okay, can you see this? Uh, much smaller than all planar graphs. So in fact, this melonic theory is uh, like, uh, it's really much simpler than a planar. Sorry, let, let me redraw it. But th this stuff you can see, right? The, yeah, you ba basically planar theory, which is a big surprise. Can you see this? Uh, no? Sorry, let, let me redraw it. Iterating, right, you, you have this, then you have this, then you can start iterating. Uh, but th this stuff you can see, right? The, 
yeah, you ba basically, you start iterating, right? You, you have this, then you have this, then you can start iterating uh, these insertions of melons and these insertions of melons and melons and side melons and so on. And then you see that and side melons and so on. And then you see that uh, melonic is a much, much smaller class than planar. Is a much, much smaller class than planar. And uh, one a planar. And uh, when I finally learned about this, I, I knew about the attempts by people like Ambjorn and collaborators. I, I knew about the attempts by people like Ambjorn and collaborators to study tensor theories in, like, starting 90 operators to study tensor theories in, like, starting 91, 92. And I thought this uh, would be something incredibly complex. And I thought this. Uh, would be something incredibly complicated because matrix models are so much more complicated than vector models. So complicated because matrix models are so much more complicated than vector models. So the general gut feeling was that this would be some unintelligible mess. But then the general gut feeling was that this would be some unintelligible mess. But then when you actually uh, look at this, and the first people to look at this was when you actually uh, look at this, and the first people to look at this was Razvan Gurao and uh, Rivasso and others, and uh, Rivasso and others. They they looked at uh, the combinatorics of this, and then you realize they they looked at uh, the combinatorics of this, and then you realize that actually the complexity of this rank three case, provided you choose this, is that. Actually, the complexity of this rank three case, provided you choose this special interaction, is actually somewhere in between that of vector and, and that of uh, matrix. So it's somewhere in between in complexity rather than being way, way more complex than the matrix. Special interaction is actually somewhere in between that of vector and, and that of uh, matrix. So it's somewhere in between in complexity rather than and, uh, and this is kind of neat. So, so the main application that was uh, first suggested in October 2016, rather than being way, way more complex than the matrix. And, uh, and this is kind of neat. So, so the main application that was was to the such devier kitaev models. Uh, originally, this was sort of hope to give you, tell you something about 3D quantum gravity, but I think that hope is uh, first suggested in October 2016 was to the such devier kitaev models. Uh, originally, this was sort of hope to give you tell a little bit too bold, but it definitely does give us some new types of solvable models in this limit, which may actually uh, be quite interesting. Tell you something about 3D quantum gravity, but I think that hope is a little bit too bold. But it definitely does give us some new types of solvable. Interesting, and that's part of the reason why I've been working on this. Okay, so uh, I just wanted. So, are there any question models in this limit which may actually uh, be quite interesting? And that's part of the reason why I've been working on this. Okay, so uh, I just wanted, so are there any questions about, this is essentially the basic setup of this, this stuff. And now I'm about, this is essentially the basic setup of this, this stuff. And now I wanted to, uh, so this was just a flavor. I wanted to, uh, so this was just a flavor for, and then you can, actually go ahead and solve for the full partition function. And then you can actually go ahead and solve for the full partition function in, in the case of each of these theories. In the case of each of these theories, uh, here I just showed to you the leading propagator corrections, but you can, uh, here I just showed to you the leading propagator corrections, but you can for example, write down the full solution of the d equals zero theory. Write down the full solution of the 
D equals zero theory. I have some notes on this which I will post, uh, but uh, let me I have some notes on this which I will post, uh, but uh, let me tell you a bit more. Like, uh, more. Like, uh, yeah, maybe before I move on, uh, since there was a question about uh, what freedom and interaction. Before I move on, uh, since there was a question about uh, what freedom and interactions we have, we can have also. Uh, so this this is what's usually called the the tetrahedral interaction, but then there is another one where which allows for double index contraction. We can have also. Uh, so this this is what's usually called the the tetrahedral interaction, but then people call it uh, pil uh, pillow interactions. So there are two, two other types of interactions that were, which allows for double index contractions. And people call it uh, pil uh, pillow interactions. Written down. So one, the total to other types of interactions that can be written down. A really obvious one is what people call the double sum. Uh, double sum where you just write G prime phi. So one, the totally obvious one is what people call the double sum. Uh, ABC phi ABC squared. Right, this one uh, again just completely breaks up into double sum where you just write G prime phi ABC phi ABC squared. Right, this one uh, uh, into these two disconnected pieces. Right. Again, just completely breaks up into uh, into these two disconnected pieces, right? And you can estimate, for example, how how the the leading correction will look like, and you can estimate, for example, how how the the leading correction will look like, and you see that the leading correction to propagator will be, and you see that the leading correction to propagator will be just this contracted on itself. So it gives you a factor of n cubed. So, so you mean just this contracted on itself. So it gives you a factor of n cubed. So, so you immediately see that leading correction, immediately see that leading correction is of order g prime times, uh, or let me call it g is of order g prime times, uh, or let me call it g double sum, g double sum times n cube, g double sum, g double sum times n cube. So you, <coughs> you want to scale, uh, <coughs> so you, <coughs> you want to scale, uh, <coughs> and we can define lambda double sum like this. Yeah, this was first uh, discussed in a paper by Karotz and Tanasa uh, in 2015. <coughs> and we can define lambda double sum like this. Yeah, this was first uh, discussed in a paper by Karotz and Tanasa. Like basically the, the combinatorics of this, this type of ON Kasa. Uh, in 2015, like for a cyan model. And then uh, my student, Tarnopolsky, and I applied this to the fermionic model where some issues are a little bit different. Basically, the, the combinatorics of this, this type of ON for a cyan model. And then uh, my student, Tarnopolsky, and I applied one. So it was a paper by me and uh, Tarnopolsky. Yeah, I should say that this to the fermionic model where 
some issues are a little bit different. So it was a paper by me and uh, Tarnapolsky. If you're doing quantum mechanics, you're perfectly okay just excluding this. It's up to you. You, you don't have to include this, but if you include all possible interactions, you again see. I should say that if you're doing quantum mechanics, you're perfectly okay just excluding this. It's up to you. you. You don't have to include this, but if you include all possible interactions, you again see that this one you have to scale with a much lower power, not like one over n to the three halves, but see that this one you have to scale with a much lower power, not like one over n to the three halves, but one over n cubed. And then there is one more, one over n cubed. And then there is one more uh, interaction that you can write down, which is uh, called pillow interaction. Uh, interaction that you can write down, which is uh, called pillow interaction. And we can call it G pillow times, and we can call it G pillow times, for example, phi a1 b1 times for example, phi A1, B1, uh, C1, phi A1, uh, C1, phi A1, B1, C2, phi A2, B2, B1, C2, phi A2, B2, C1, phi A2, B2, C2. C1, phi A2, B2, C2. So this one actually looks completely planar if you draw. So this one actually looks completely planar if you draw the index flows. Like these two fields are contracted by a pair of indices and these two fields are contracted by a pair of indices. So, so you, you get something like, uh, if you start with this, the index flows. Like these two fields are contracted by a pair of indices and these two fields are contracted by a pair of indices. So, so you, you get some uh, matrix interaction which, which I wrote down. Let me just redraw this pillow here. Uh, thing like, uh, if you start with this uh, matrix interaction which which I wrote down. Let me just redraw this. This differs from this by how these middle blue lines are interconnected. In the pillow case, they, they were pillow here. Uh, it just differs from this by how these middle blue lines are interconnected. Okay. So there is absolutely no non-planarity. So this is what we would call the pillow vertex case, they, they will be connected like this. Okay. So there is absolutely no non-planarity. Pillow vertex. Okay, and it's rather different again in its structure from the, so this is what we would call the pillow vertex. Pillow vertex. Uh, from the tetrahedron vertex, which is our preferred vertex. And here you basically see that when you come, okay, it's rather different again in its structure from the, uh, from the tetrahedron vertex, which is our preferred vertex. And here you basically see that when you compute the leading correction with this vertex, you see that the leading correction will be like GP. Leading correction with this vertex, you see that the leading correction will be like GP times n squared, and this will be n squared, and this will be lambda pillow. So, so you again have to scale this GP faster to, uh, so you again have to scale this GP faster to, to zero in the large n limit than the other ones, or in the large n limit than the other ones. So in this sense, you can worry that that the lim that you can worry that that the lim the new large n limit uh, based on the tetrahedral diagram is the new large n limit uh, based on the tetrahedral diagram is somewhat fine tuned 
because you you're sort of tuning one specific because you you're sort of tuning one specific form of interaction to dominate and uh, form of interaction to dominate and uh, and the rest you're trying to suppress. Uh, perhaps this is a valid complaint, but still it's and the rest you're trying to suppress. Uh, perhaps this is a valid complaint, but still it's within your power to do this. I mean, already for the matrix, within your power to do this. I mean, already for the matrix model, you're doing a bit of fine tuning to suppress this double sum. Matrix model, you're doing a bit of fine tuning to suppress this double sum. So in some sense, the most generic large n limit is the vector one, and that you already see uh, even from the matrix model. The reason you don't see these double trace things in the Toft model is that they're not allowed by. So in some sense, the most generic large n limit is the vector one, and that you already see uh, even from the matrix model. The reason you don't see the gauge invariance, like you, you, you only have like trace f mu nu, f mu nu, but you cannot write down like trace f mu nu because these double trace things in the Toft model is that they're not allowed by gauge invariance, like you, you, you only have like trace f mu nu, f mu nu, trace f mu nu, because that vanishes. So for Toft was on a completely safe footing with gluons, uh, with this uh, nu, but you cannot write down like trace f mu nu, because times trace f mu nu, because that vanishes. So for Toft was on a completely uh, one matrix model, you do have to do a bit of fine tuning to remove the double trace, if you will. Or you can solve it, including it, and see safe footing with gluons. Uh, with this uh, one matrix model, you do have to do a bit of fine tuning to remove the double trace, what you get. Okay, so now let me just talk a little bit about beyond the leading order, uh, which I discussed here, if you will. Or you can solve it, including it, and see what you get. Okay, so now let me just talk a little bit about beyond the leading order, uh, which I discussed here. So for example, uh, so let's just discuss the partition function. In, uh, so for example, uh, so let's just discuss the partition function in uh, g equals zero, sorry, d equals zero g equals zero, sorry, d equals zero. So let me start with something really trivial, which is so let me start with something really trivial, which is just the integral, which often people mention, just the integral, which often people mention at the beginning of a field theory class to just uh, d equals, and at the beginning of a field theory class to just uh, d equals zero series. Like suppose you do a d equals zero five four theory, uh, integral from minus infinity to plus infinity d phi over root two pi, right? Zero series. Like suppose you do a d equals zero five four theory, uh, integral from minus infinity e to the minus phi squared over two minus g over twenty four. <coughs> phi to the four, e to plus infinity d phi over root two pi, right, e to the minus phi squared over two minus g, right, then you can just do the expansion of this, right, in powers of g, uh, like you, we all know how to do the e over 24 <coughs> phi to the four, right, then you can just do the expansion of this, right, in powers of g, uh, the leading term is one. I adjusted the measure it, so you get like one minus g over eight plus 35 
like you, we all know how to do this. Uh, the leading term is one. I adjusted the measure, it, so you get like one minus g over 384 g squared plus dot, dot, dot. And in fact, there is an exact answer in this case, right? Over eight plus 35 over 384 g squared plus dot, dot, dot. And in fact, there is an exact answer in this case, right? This integral can just be done, and you get square root of three over two pi g. This integral can just be done, and you get square root of three over two pi g, uh, e to the three over four g, uh, e to the three over four g, modified Bessel function k one four three over four g. Modified Bessel function k one four three over four g. But then it's interesting to. But then it's interesting to think about the sum over connected diagram. So when you look at log z, at the sum over connected diagram. So when you look at log z, right? Uh, you see that again there will right. Uh, you see that, again, there will be snail type and melon type diagrams appearing in the, the low orders. Snail type and melon type diagrams appearing in the, the low orders. So you will, for example, have like this diagram. So you will, for example, have like this diagram at order G, right? And then there will be two diagrams at order G squared or G. Right, and then there will be two diagrams at order g squared. One is this sort of squared. One is this sort of a bubble one, and then there is the melon one. This is the basic a bubble one, and then there is the melon one. This is the basic melon. Sorry, melon. Sorry. Right, plus, so this is of order G, this. Right, plus, so this is of order G, this is G squared, G squared, and this is G squared, G squared, and this is, then there are all sorts of additional diagrams that you can have. Then there are all sorts of additional diagrams that you can have. And uh, and you see that uh, yeah this uh, this diagram and uh, and you see that uh, yeah this uh, this diagram so we get the sub, these two are obviously comparable. They both have to be included, and you get like minus g over eight. So we get the sub, these two are obviously comparable. They both have to be included, plus g squared over 12. And then you have a divergent asymptotic series, right? These coefficients here will diverge as included, and you get like minus g over eight plus g squared over 12, and then you have a divergent asymptotic series tutorial. So you get divergent asymptotic series, uh, or series, right? These coefficients here will diverge as n factorial. So you get divergent asymptotic series. But still, at small g, this, this gives you a pretty good approximation. Okay, now suppose we want to start uh, or series. But still, at small g, this, this gives you a pretty good approximation. Okay, now suppose we want to study these theories, the multi-field theories, right? All the theories that we're Theory, the multi-field theories, right? All the theories that we wrote down, 
can be written down in the general form where you just have some can be written down in the general form where you just have some uh, some set of fields with some quartic vertex. Uh, some set of fields with some quartic vertex. So So the multi-field case, so the multi-field case, multi-component can be a component, can be written as Z is product, Z is product uh, from one to N integral from minus infinity to plus from 1 to n integral from minus infinity to plus infinity d phi i over square root of infinity d phi i over square root of 2 pi right and then we have e to the minus 1 half phi right and then we have e to the minus 1 half phi i phi i minus phi i minus 1 over 4 factorial uh, C i j k l phi i factorial uh, C i j k l phi i phi j phi k phi l phi j phi k phi l and then in the case of vector model we just take uh, and then in the case of vector model, we just take, uh, so then you can basically look at uh, the vertex, right? So th then this vertex here will be, will be. So then you can basically look at uh, the vertex, right? So th then this vertex C minus, minus C I J K L. And then you can evaluate what each of these diagrams gives. C will be C minus, minus C I J K L. And then you can, right, you see that, uh, what each of these diagrams gives. Right, you see that uh, case the uh, log z, which is the expansion in connected diagrams, you'll get minus c i i. So in this case, the uh, log z, which is the expansion in connected diagram, j j. This is the figure eight diagram, and you get factor one eight plus uh, grams. You'll get minus C I I J J. This is the figure eight diagram, and you get factor one eight plus uh, C I J K L C I J K L divided by forty E I J K L. C I J K L divided by 48 and then 8 and then plus C I I K L C J J K L divided C I I K L C J J K L divided by 16 plus order divided by 16 plus order C cubed, right? And this is the figure, you see the way the indices are contracted here, pair one, right? And this is the figure, you see the way the indices are contracted here, pairwise, this corresponds to this diagram. This corresponds, this corresponds to this diagram. This corresponds to the melon because, because you see that to the melon because 
because you see that you have just CIJKL contracted like this. You have just CIJKL contracted like this. And then this one is, uh, is the bubble. That, and then this one is, uh, is the bubble diagram. Okay, and then you, Okay, and then you can look at specific cases and again see that uh, which ones dominate. So for example, look at specific cases and again see that uh, which ones dominate. So for example, in the ON vector theory, so to, to get the, in the ON vector theory, model on vector you write C I J K L so to to get the on vector model on vector G over three times just symmetrized vertex delta I J delta K L plus Delta, you write C i j k l is equal to g over three times just symmetrized vertex delta i j a delta j l plus delta i l delta j k, and you get delta k l plus delta i k delta j l plus delta i l. So. You just plug this in, and the propagator is just given by delta ij. So the prop, and you get the following weights. So you just plug this in, and the propagator is just given by delta ij. So the propagator is just delta ij. You plug this into these calculations, it is just delta ij. You plug this into these calculations, and you get the following result. That log z of g, the following result. That log z of g divided by n is equal to minus n divided by n is equal to minus n plus 2 over 24g, 2 over 24g plus uh, g squared plus, uh, g squared n plus 2 over 144 n plus 2 over 144 plus g squared n plus 2 g squared n plus 2 squared divided by 144 divided by 144 plus order g cubed. And you see that this is the figure 8 plus order g cubed. And you see that this is the figure 8 diagram. This is the, uh, this is, this is the, uh, this is the melon. And this is the, the so these two are bubble diagram. And this is the, the so these two are bubble diagrams. And then we, we see that both of them survive in this large n limit, right? So then again, defining lambda is g n, we see that you can write the, and then we, we see that both of them survive in this large n limit, right? So then again, defining lambda is G sir in the following form, right? You can write this, this as F zero of lambda plus one over N. We see that you can write the, the answer in the following form, right? You can write this, this as F one of lambda plus some higher order corrections plus order 
1 over n squared lambda plus 1 over n f1 of lambda plus some higher order correction. Get like the 1 over n expansion and each one will have some non-trivial function of lambda appearing here where lambda is 1 over n squared. So you get like the 1 over n expansion and each one will have some non-trivial function originally that lambda is equal to gn. For example, from these, from this explicit diagram appearing here, where lambda is what I defined originally, that lambda is equal to gn. For example, from these, from this explicit diagram calculation, we see that f0, f0, we see that f0, F0 of lambda is equal to minus lambda equal to minus lambda over 24 plus lambda squared over 144 plus lambda squared over 144 plus order lambda cubed. <coughs> order lambda cubed. I guess I'm out of time. Okay. I guess I'm out of time, pretty much. Uh, yeah. So. Uh, yeah. So. So this is. Uh, uh, so next time I will compute. Uh, uh, so next time I will compute. Uh, Compute the non-perturbative expression for for f non-perturbative expression for for f zero, for example. It's really not very hard. Uh, maybe I'll just really not very hard. Uh, maybe I'll just quickly write down how you get the non-perturbative, the full function. Just quickly write down how you get the non-perturbative, the full function f zero. You, you do appeal to this Hubbard Stratonovich method. You, you do appeal to this Hubbard Stratonovich method. Like you can rewrite the interaction. Like you can rewrite the interaction in this case, z vector. So you can rewrite z vector. So you can rewrite z vector. Uh, as as this uh, product of the integrals of d phi i over root two pi d vector uh, as as this uh, product of the integral, and then you introduce a, a field d sigma d sigma square root of six over of d phi i over root 2 pi, right? And then you introduce a, a field d sigma e to the minus 6n sigma squared divided by lambda minus d sigma square root of 6 over pi g e to the minus phi k phi k over 2 times 1 plus n sigma squared divided by lambda minus phi k phi k phi k over 2 times 1 plus 2i sigma 1 plus 2i sigma 1 plus 2i sigma Okay, this is, this is essentially, so sigma is the hubbard Stratonovich. field. This is, this is essentially, so sigma is the hubbard Stratonovich field. If I integrate out sigma field, if I integrate out sigma, uh, it's a Gaussian integral, I generate this phi k, 
it's a Gaussian integral, I generate this phi k, phi k squared interaction. On the other hand, phi k squared interaction. On the other hand, uh, we can, this, in this picture we can perform the Gaussian, can, this, in this picture we can perform the Gaussian integral over phi k first, and then evaluate the integral, integral over phi k first, and then evaluate the integral over sigma using settle point, which is valid. You see that there will be n settle point, which is valid. You see that there will be n outside here, and the integral over phi k gives us another outside here, and the integral over phi k gives us another factor of n. So this becomes, this can be written as square root. So this becomes, this can be written as square root of 6 over pi g times integral d of 6 over pi g times integral d sigma e to the minus 6n sigma squared e to the minus 6n sigma squared over lambda minus n over 2 log 1 plus 2i sigma. So you see that there is an n in the, in the exponent, so over lambda minus n over 2 log 1 plus 2i sigma. So you can evaluate by, evaluate by settle point method. See that there is an n in the, in the exponent, so so that's why you can evaluate by evaluate. And then you get an explicit answer, which indeed that small lambda agrees with. You can check it by using diagrammatic perturbation theory by settle point method. And then you get an explicit answer, which indeed that small lambda agrees with. I'm out of time, I should probably stop here. But then you can, uh, similarly, actually perform the calculations agrees with, you can check it by using diagrammatic perturbation theory. So since I'm out of time, I should probably stop here. But then you can uh, similarly actually perform the calculations both for the matrix and, the, and even the tensor model in this matrix and, that, and even the tensor model in this uh, d equals zero, the tensor model can be solved. Essential analytics, uh, d equals zero, the tensor model can be solved, essential analytically. Uh, and uh, the sum over Mellon graphs can be evaluated. Uh, and uh, the sum over Mellon graphs can be evaluated using a version of uh, Schwinger-Dyson equation. So, I'll be using a version of uh, Schwinger Dyson equation. So I'll derive this next. I'll start to, uh, tomorrow's lecture by deriving this, and then I think I'll start to, uh, tomorrow's lecture by deriving this, and then I think I'll switch more to connection with d equal one <coughs> models, which are switch more to connection with d equal one <coughs> models, which are quantum mechanical, and discuss them. Mechanical and discuss them. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.